So modern intensive farming is really the end stage of a process that began some two and a half million years ago when our ancestors, Homo habilis, uh, learnt it by uh, communicating, coordinating, collaborating in hunting parties. They were able to more successfully hunt game animals. Now, when they invented fire and were able to cook those game animals, uh, jointly this enabled a much greater consumption of animal protein than had been the case before. Now the brain is an organ that requires a lot of nutrients and this enabled the expansion of our brains and our evolution into homo sapiens that we are today. People learned that it was more efficient to actually start to herd animals together in enclosures rather than chase them around the landscape. This enabled people to settle down in settlements um, and enabled people to start to specialise uh, and led ultimately to the civilizations that we have today. Intensive farming really began some 6,000 years ago in ancient China when people intensively farmed silkworm moths. But it really took off after World War II when there was widespread uh, food scarcity and people needed the availability of food reliably and cheaply. So the industrial processes that have been developed during the war for the production of war machinery were applied to farming, animal farming for the first time, particularly to hooved animals like pigs and to poultry. And in the last 50 years since the war, there's been about a 500% increase in uh, per capita consumption of eggs, a 300% increase in per capita consumption of meat worldwide, and that's been driven by the intensive farming of these animals. Intensively farmed animals experience both harms and benefits. Uh, the benefits are that they are protected from predators, they're in a managed environment, they receive preventative health care, vaccinations, worm control and parasite control and so on. The harms to intensively farmed animals are of course death because they are usually killed at a very premature stage of life. Um, severe spatial restriction, they're often very confined in relatively barren and standardised environments without much environmental enrichment, where they don't have the opportunity to exercise natural behaviours that they're often highly motivated to perform. So these might be things like scratching and foraging and exploring a natural environment. It might be social behaviours, it might be building nests in the case of uh, mother animals. Um, there's also a variety of painful husbandry procedures that they're often subjected to, uh, things like uh, castration, beak trimming, tail docking, hot iron branding, and quite a number of others. And unfortunately, for economic reasons, uh, painkillers are, are often not given when these procedures are conducted, which is a great shame because it does only cost a few pennies per animal to provide them. Another important uh, harm that these animals experience is that they're often uh, bred over many, many generations to be as highly productive as possible. So uh, to produce as many eggs per year as possible, uh, to grow as quickly as possible in the case of meat, chickens and pigs, to produce as much milk as possible in the case of um, dairy cattle. And this places their bodies on a lot of strain. Uh, their bones can become uh, fragile because they're laying so many eggs. Uh, they can become lame because of the excessive body weight supplied to their joints. And the dairy cattle uh, become chronically hungry because they're just not able to take in enough nutrients to fulfill the, the demand to produce so much milk. Worldwide, about 3 million pounds of antibiotics are given to humans annually. Around about 2 million pounds are given to animals uh, to treat diseases annually, but around about another 27.5 million pounds is actually given to animals uh, that are intensively farmed to uh, promote them to grow more quickly uh, or to prevent them from becoming ill in the very crowded and unhygienic and stressful conditions in which they're kept. These have a number of adverse effects. One is that all of these pharmaceuticals are urinated out by the animals, uh, get into the groundwater, leach into streams, and have been found in waterways throughout Europe and unfortunately many other countries. So these antibiotics are given to intensively farmed animals for prolonged periods of time and at, at sub-therapeutic doses, doses which are lower than you would give to treat a disease outbreak. And what that means is that the dosing doesn't kill all of the bacteria that are present. It only kills the weaker bacteria. The bacteria that are more resistant to the antibiotics survive. And because the generational time span of bacteria is so short, 20 minutes or thereabouts, uh, very quickly the, the survivors breed up uh, to replace the existing population and the entire population of bacteria becomes resistant. So the production of antibody resistant bacteria on intensive farms is a major threat to human health. Intensive animal farming has resulted in the most serious animal welfare problems in history, some devastating environmental impacts and some really quite grave threats to public health.